Math 1314, chapter six, matrices and determinants, section one, matrix solutions to linear systems, video four, Gaussian elimination and back substitution. In a previous video, we learned some row operations and now we're gonna use them to convert a system of equations to an augmented matrix, reduce the augmented matrix to row echelon form, and then turn it back into a system and solve it by back substitution. It's actually very straightforward if you know where to look. So let's summarize the moves that we're going to do, and then we'll play them out. Gaussian elimination is the process of using row operations to transform an augmented matrix into row echelon form. Back substitution is the process of converting an augmented matrix in row echelon form, form, back into a system of equations, then solving for each variable one at a time by substituting known values back into previous equations, hence the phrase back substitution. And here's how you do Gaussian elimination. This is easier to do than it is to put into words. Step one, using either a row swap or a scaling, meaning that you multiply by any value that you want, create a one in the first row, first column. This will be your first pivot. Second, using combining of rows, meaning multiplying one row by any number you want and adding it to another row, create zeros below the first pivot. What you'll notice is that every time we create a one in a column, we will use it, we will scale it to eliminate the numbers below it. That's why one is so valuable. It's easy to turn into any number we want. Number three, okay, so let's keep in mind what just happened. We got the one in the first row, first column, and we zeroed out everything below it. Number three, using scaling, create a one in the first non-zero entry in the next row. And then number four, using combining of rows, create zeros below this pivot. And then the fifth step is to repeat steps three and four as necessary until you've achieved row echelon form. Once you see it in action, it's actually pretty straightforward. So let's take a look at it in action. <coughs> We're gonna solve the system using Gaussian elimination and back substitution. Uh, the first equation, first let me fix the typo here. The first equation is 3x plus y plus 2z is equal to 31. The second equation is x plus y plus 2z is equal to 19. And the third equation is x plus 3y plus 2z is equal to 25. All right, our first objective or our first move, if you will, is to write this as an augmented matrix. And that move is pretty easy. We just have to represent each variable. Uh, we'll draw the brackets last. The brackets last. Uh, we just have to represent each variable's coefficients per column. So the first column will be 3, 1, 1 for the 3x, the x, and the x. The next column will be 1, 1, 3 for the y, the y, and the 3y. The next column will be all twos because all of the z's are two z's, followed by our augmentation bar, and then our constants, 31, 19, and 25. Okay. Your initial focal point is on the first row, first column right here. Because we need that to be a one. And there's a couple of ways to make it happen. Number one is to swap out some rows to put a one there if there's already a row in the first column elsewhere. In this case, we have a one in both the second row and the third row. So we could just switch out any row with the first row and get a one up there. The other option is to use scaling, meaning to multiply. Well, we could multiply the top row by one third and that would turn that three into a one, but I'm not sure if I wanna do that because none of the other numbers in the top row are multiples of three. So that will create fractions unnecessarily. So I'm not gonna do a scaling move to achieve a one in the first row, first column, but I will do a row swap. Now, in this case, the second and third rows both have ones in the first column. So there's no apparent real advantage to doing a row swap at this point with either the first and second rows or the first and third rows. So I'm just gonna do a row swap with the first and the second. A row swap with the first and third would also achieve the initial goal of getting a one in the first row, first column. Since we're not messing with the third row, let's go ahead and write it down. One, three, two, 25. And now let's just switch the first and the second row. The first row moves into the second row. So three, one, two, 31. And then the second row moves into the first row, one, one, two, 19. And I'm gonna to continue to highlight where my pivots are going to be. In linear algebra, that's called the pivot position regardless of the number that's in there. Uh, but in this case, our pivot is going to be a one. And now that we've got the first move accomplished, the first move of using a row swap 
or scaling to create a one in the first row, first column. Now we're going to use that one to eliminate everything below it. For example, what could we do to eliminate the three underneath that one? Well, if we multiplied that one times negative three, it would set up opposites and it would cancel the three below it. So that's the suggestion that we're going to do negative three times the first row and add it into the second row. And let's see what that gives us. Now, I'm not changing the first row. I'm using the first row, but I'm not changing it. So it stays the same. And the third row isn't even involved in this, so it's gonna stay the same. But the second row will, will change. So one at a time, let's do negative three times the number in the first row and add it to the second row, starting with the, the first column. We're gonna do negative three times one and add it to the three below it. That will give us zero right here. Now we're gonna do the same thing here. Remember, we're multiplying the number in the first row by negative three. So here we'll have negative three times one, add it to the number below it, which is also one, and that will give us negative two. In this column, we're doing negative three times the number in the first row, which is two adding it to the number in the second row, which is also two. Negative three times two is six, six plus two is negative four. And then in the last column, the augmented column, we're gonna do negative three times what's in the first row. So negative three times 19 plus the number into the second row and write the results in the second row. Negative three times 19 is negative 57. Negative 57 plus 31, I believe, is negative 28. That doesn't sound right. It's negative 26. Negative 57 plus 31, negative 26. Yes, negative 26. All right, and at this point, we have achieved a couple of important things. We've gotten the one as the first non-zero entry in the first row, and we've got a zero below it, but we don't have we don't have zeros completely below it. We still have to deal with the one below it in the third row. So we're going to do another combination, this time using the first row and the third row to create a zero right there. It's not there yet, but it's about to be. Let me pause and write this matrix on the next page and we'll continue. All right, so here's where we left off. And uh, let's just keep in mind of where we are in the process. So let's go back a couple of pages. Uh, we did the first step already. The first step was to create a one in the first row, first column. We are currently in the second step using combining of rows, of rows, excuse me. Using combining of rows, create zeros below the first pivot. Well, we've created the first zero below the first pivot, but not the complete, we haven't zeroed out everything below the first one. Now we need to focus on getting rid of this one right here. And when you do these combinations, you are always going to use the row with the pivot, the row with the one to eliminate everything below it. So we need to think about how we can use this one to eliminate that one below it by doing a combination. Remember the yellow one, we can turn into any number we want by multiplying. We need it to become a negative one to cancel the positive one below it. So we're going to do negative one times the first row and add it to the third row. Now let's go ahead and write down everything that's not going to change. The first row is not going to change. We'll use it, but it won't change. We are not tampering with the second row, so it's going to stay the same. It's the third row that is about to change. All right, so let's document all these moves. This one's a little bit easier because we're multiplying by negative one. All right, so on the first column, we would do negative one times what's in the first row and add it to what's in the third row. Well, that's just gonna equal zero. That was the whole purpose of that move. In the next column, we're going to do negative one times whatever's in the top row, which is also a one, plus add it to whatever's in the third row, which is three, we're adding it down there. And negative one times one is negative one plus three is two. And then for the next column, we're trying to, we're going to do the operation here. 
we're doing negative one times what's in the first row. So negative one times two, adding it to what's in the third row, which also happens to be a two. This also gives me a zero. That's not too bad. I didn't need it, but it's there. Oh, but we also have to do it over here. We have to use this 19 onto that 25. So the last one is going to be negative one times what's in the first row, 19. Add it to what's in the third row, 25. And that will give us six. In terms of getting row echelon form, which is where this is going, we now have the one in the first row, first column. So the first non-zero number in the first row is one, followed by all the zeros below it. And you'll notice that we have now accomplished step two, use combining of rows, create zeros below the first pivot. So now we're on the third step. The third step is to use scaling to create a one in the first non-zero entry in the next row. In other words, we need to get our next one for row echelon form. That means that we need a one right here. That is the first non-zero entry in the next row and it is currently not a one. We're gonna use scaling to make it a one. In other words, we're gonna use multiplication. Now, what are we gonna multiply by? Well, it's actually pretty easy. If there's not a one where you want it, you can multiply that row by the reciprocal of whatever is in that position. In this case, there's a negative two. The reciprocal of that is negative one half. We're gonna multiply the second row by negative one half and see what we get. We're not changing the first row. We're not changing the third row. We're only multiplying the second row by negative one half. Zero times negative one half is zero. Negative two times negative one half is one. Negative four times negative one half is two. Negative 26 times negative one half is 13. And again, let's stay focused on the pieces that we're trying to make happen. We want ones here. We want zeros below them. We've got one of the zeros already. Uh, we don't have a zero here yet, but that's our next move. Our next move is using combining of rows, create zeros below this pivot. Well, the pivot that we just made was the one that is currently highlighted right here. So now we need to use that to make zeros below it. So we need to use this one to cancel that two. Well, what can we do with a one to turn it into something that would cancel the two? The answer is multiply by negative two. We need to do negative two times the second row and add it to the third row. And let's see what we get. First row staying the same. Second row is being used, but it's staying the same. And the third row is going to change. All right, so let's document all these moves. On the first column, we do negative two times what's in the second row and add it to the third row. So negative two times zero plus zero. Well, that's just a whole bunch of zeros. In the next column, we do negative two times what's in the second row. So negative two times one, add it to the third row. That gives us zero. That was what we designed to happen. In the next column, we do negative two times what's in the second row. So negative two times two, add it to what's in the third row and we get negative four. And in the last column, we do negative two times what's in the second row, add it to the third row and we get negative 20. We've got a good chunk of row echelon form created. I'm missing my tools. Let me find them real quick. Where are my whiteboard tools? There they are. Okay. Um, let's see. We've got the first non-zero entry in the first row is one. And the first non-zero entry in the second row is one. And below each of those pivots, we have zeros. So what's the only thing we're missing? Well, the only thing we're missing for row echelon form is the first non-zero entry in the next row is not one. We need that negative four to be a one. Well, we can achieve that with a real quick scaling. All we have to do, remember, to turn any number into one, any non-zero number into one, is to multiply by its reciprocal. 
If we multiply negative four times negative one fourth, that will create the one there, but we can't just multiply the negative four, we have to multiply the entire third row. And so when we do that, the negative four will become a one and the negative 20 times negative one fourth is five. And so our final matrix is going to look something like this, or rather our row echelon for matrix is gonna look something like this. The first two rows stay the same and the third row became zero, zero, one, five. And we are now in row echelon form. The first non-zero entry in each row is one. So those are our three pivots and below each pivot are zeros. So we have achieved row echelon form, but we haven't solved the system. Solving a system using Gaussian elimination, which is what this process is called. Gaussian elimination is the process of using row operations to turn a matrix into row echelon form. The back substitution end of it is to turn this back into a system of equations and then finish solving it. Assuming the variables were X, Y, and Z, which they were at the beginning, there they are, that we can turn this back into a system of equations. The top row represents the equation X plus Y plus two Z is equal to 19. The second row represents zero X's plus one Y plus two Z's is equal to 19. And the, th the 13, excuse me. And the third row is simply no X's, no Y's, one Z is equal to five. So we instantly have one third of our solution. We know what Z equals. Now it's time to back substitute. I'm gonna do it this way. We're gonna take this guy and take it back to the equation above him. The reason we're not going to the first equation is that it contains X and Y, whereas the second equation only contains Y, well, in addition to Z's. In other words, if I go back into the second equation, I can solve for Y. Y plus two times Z, except Z was five, is equal to 13. And if we solve this, we get Y equals three. And now we continue the back substitution by taking both the Z that we have and the Y that we have back into the top equation. And that will give us X plus Y, which is three, plus two Z's, so two times five, is equal to 19. And if we solve that, we should get X is equal to six. And just like that, we've solved our system using an augmented matrix and using Gaussian elimination back substitution. To quickly recap what happened, and I do wanna make it quick. Turn the matrix, excuse me, turn the system into an augmented matrix, and then begin the process of getting the necessary components of row echelon form, starting with the one in the upper right, upper left corner. So we turn the three into a one, with a row swap, we row swap rows one and two. Then we use that one to eliminate the three below it by using this uh, combination move, creating the zero. And then we use the one that's still highlighted in yellow to get rid of the one in the third row to get a zero there by using this row operation. Then we focused on turning this negative two into a one by doing a scaling move, got the one here. Then we use that one to get rid of the two below it using a combination move. Then all we had to do was turn this negative four into a one using this row operation. Puts it in row echelon form, turn it back into a system of equations, do some back substituting, and then we're done. It actually flows pretty quickly once you do a few examples. It's just knowing where in the process you are. Get the initial one, zero out everything below it. Get the next one, zero out everything below it. Get the next one, zero out everything below it until you're in row echelon form. So get a one, zeros below. Get the next one, zeros below. Get the next one, zeros below. And it should get the job done most of the times. I say should because there are exceptions which we'll talk about in the last video.